Welcome to the 11th edition of the Bison Booster Harding University Sports Hall of Fame. The edition of the 11th edition of this year's inductees make 100 male and female athletes since we started in 1989. I know that's probably short of what some of the Hall of Fames that you've been to, but since we only have it every five years, we felt like it, we've done probably as good a job as we could do. We want to say for those of you, well, let me just say this, probably most of you don't know who I am. That's okay. Uh, I'm Harold Valentine. And uh, I'm secretary of the Bison Booster Club and the chairman of the selection committee for this year's event. We want to welcome those of you who are permanent members of our community. We want to invite you to come back and come on the campus as often as you can. We want to welcome those of you who are very infrequent visitors to the campus. Some of you who are being inducted tonight probably have not been back very many times, but we're glad that you're here. Those of us who do live here in Searcy won't tell you that it's been a pleasure for us to go through this process. For myself, I'd like to personally congratulate all the inductees and their families. I want to thank you inductees wholeheartedly for making this part of Harding College, Harding University, an experience of exciting one for me especially and for the rest of us who are in this room. Many of you have changed in your looks. <laughs> Jerry Moat, for instance. <laughs> but we, uh, we were just talking at our table over here. We, uh, some of you we remember, because you look a lot like you did then when you were here, but some of you do not for various reasons. And we'll just go on with that. <laughs> you know, when we started, when I say we, I was fortunate enough to be um, on a committee back when I was in school here with uh, Pinky Berry Hill, Dr. Joe Pryor, and Cliff Gaynus as the group that got together and said, well, why don't we restart interscholastic sports here? And that's when the beginning of it was. I think I may have been a sophomore when that took place. But um, it was quite a, a revealing thing for me to see pictures periodically of the three of them especially. And I had to go to class that day. I couldn't, I couldn't be in the picture. Sure, that's what it was. <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for following Harding Sports, as you all do. We're grateful that you've had a safe journey here. We hope that you have a safe journey back home. I'd like to introduce, in a few minutes, our Master of Ceremonies. But I want to introduce you to the one who's going to pray, and then I'll introduce you to Duck City. May we pray. Father, we are grateful tonight for the privilege of being here on this occasion. Grateful for the safety, the journey of <clears throat> everyone who's come to be with us. And Father, we're grateful for the food that we've eaten, <clears throat> for those who prepared it for us. But especially tonight, Father, we're grateful to you for the many blessings that you've given us. 
the loving care and protection that you've had over Harding University through all of these years and the faculty and staff and the students that are here. Father, we're grateful to the service, for the service of all those who have been a blessing to our students. Thank you for the staff, the faculty. And Father, we're grateful also for the students, for their abilities, for their zeal and love for you and for this school. And grateful for the athletes that have entertained us and have blessed us with their abilities and their hard work and zeal for the sport that they've chosen. And Father, we're so grateful for the many who have excelled in so many ways, excelled spiritually, academically, <laughs> athletically, and tonight we honor many of them. There are many others, of course, but for these we are grateful. Thank you, Father, for being with us all of our days and blessing us and using us in your service. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to introduce our <coughs> Master of Ceremonies for the evening, a former classmate of mine who littered for the Bisons in three sports and has served as the football team doctor since his return to Searcy in 1975 to practice medicine, Dr. Jim City. What a privilege and an honor it is to stand up here before you. I expect under this ceiling <clears throat> tonight's gathered some of the best athletes that ever wore the black and gold at Harding University. I mean, uh, as I've read these statistics, I almost became emotional about some of the things that you people have done during your careers at uh, Harding University. It's really been humbling, and it's been a very special, special thing for me to uh, get up here and be able to introduce you. <clears throat> Here's a, our format for you inductees. I'm going to read about you here, and there's going to be a slideshow up here kind of showing you at uh, a little more young age than you are tonight. <clears throat> and uh, then uh, Mr. Valentine's going to present the plaque for you. Your uh, story and your picture will go into the Road Reeves uh, field house on the permanent uh, wall of the Hall of Fame. So we look forward to inducting you tonight. We're grateful and honored that you're here with us and we want to make this as efficient as possible. We have 14 inductees. And we've tried to sort of limit the amount of response time that each of you have to um, maybe five minutes. So when I leave, and some of you won't take that long, some of you want to start telling old war stories, and we'll be here all night, you know. So we're going to try to keep it to five minutes. I'll leave my phone up here set for five minutes, and when it goes off, <clears throat> when it goes off, you can either ignore it or keep talking, but if you keep talking, a full body slam is going to follow that. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Are there members of the Bison Booster Club here tonight? I want you to stand if we have Bison Booster Club members. Thank you. And then what about the uh, Hall of Fame committee? All of you stand also. <clears throat> this is a, a great group of people. They donate a lot of time and effort. And really, I, I know it's like a lot of church settings. We don't make everybody happy with these selections, you know. <clears throat> but we really work hard at trying to get the most talented people and the most deserving people to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. So it's, it's been a great blessing. Buy some boosters is volunteer. You know, we try to uh, save money and spend money on behalf of Harding University. And uh, just in terms of a pitch, every year when we start advertising for membership in the Bison Booster Club, send us a check for $100. And if you're ever on the campus, you'll get to go to the ball game free. And if not, you're helping Harding University Athletics. Uh, we've, we've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars through the years, and it all goes into the support of that program. So you can help us out 
if you've a mind to. So we look forward to that uh, in the days ahead. We have a great athletic director, Greg Harnden. Where's Greg? He just skipped out of the meal. Stand up, Greg. <clears throat> Greg's an old uh, basketball coach, but honestly, he's done a great job in that role as athletic director. We have many people here that could serve there, but Greg has uh, taken us through several conference changes. The um, improvement in the facilities has been outstanding. I hope some of you had a chance to go around uh, the campus today and see the good things that have gone on, and uh, he's done an outstanding job. Scott Good. Scott Good, this guy knows everything about you. I mean, and he's made a list of statistics for me to read to you tonight. So don't think you can get anything by Scott Good. He honestly knows everything about you. <clears throat> he, he made one mistake. He told me once on an airplane trip we were going uh, to football that I fouled out in the basketball game with two minutes left in the half and had not scored. And I know that's not right, <laughs> It probably was, actually. Uh, <clears throat> well, we're looking forward to a, a great evening. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank you, inductees, for being great representatives of Harding University. And we applaud the, the uh, accomplishments that you made while you were students here. It's good to remember. This room will be open for a long time after our uh, ceremony tonight. So if you do want to stand and tell War stories, we'll have plenty of time to do that after the uh, program. Our first inductee tonight is Carol Bailey, and he'll present your plaque in just a minute, Carol. In the year 1983, and if I'm math correct, that's 26 years ago, uh, Harding started its uh, woman's basket uh, volleyball program. And the man that was tasked with that job, uh, and he began the team from scratch, was our first inductee, Dr. Carol Bailey. And six seasons into his tenure in 1989, Bailey's uh, Lady Bisons went 43 and eight. And that's still Harding's record for the most wins in a season. And won Harding's first of three straight AIC regular season championships. In 91, Carroll and that team won 42 matches. <coughs> Bailey added two more conference championships in 1993 and 94. And uh, Coach Bailey um, coached starting volleyball team through the transition into Division II, and that has not been easy, I must tell you. And uh, retired uh, from coaching volleyball following the 1998 season. In those 16 years, Carol Bailey won 370 matches, and his athletes had something to do with that, I think, Carol. The five regular season conference championships, and he directed Harding to its first national tournament birth in 1991. And we've put some quotes in here about these uh, inductees. Tom Ritchie, who is Harding's Director of Recreation, says this about uh, Coach Bailey, and he was a graduate assistant in those uh, first two years of uh, Carroll's uh, volleyball uh, tenure. He said this, in 1983, Coach Bailey took on the task of starting intercollegiate volleyball, a sport he had never coached before. He took on the task with enthusiasm and energy and determination. That hard work paid off as Harding won championships in the Arkansas Intercollegiate Conference, the Gulf South Conference, the Great American Conference. It was my pleasure to accompany him on those first two years of that journey. So our first inductee, Dr. Carol Bailey. <laughs> I'll try to make this as uh, very brief, but I do want to say thank you to some people. Uh, Tom Ritchie was almost right when he said I'd had absolutely no experience beforehand. Uh, in 1962-63, I was called in by the uh, head of the Department of Physical Education at Ohio State University 
and told I would be the assistant men's volleyball coach as they were going into uh, club work, which later led to uh, intercollegiate <coughs> volleyball for men at Ohio State. I had one year. 21 years later, I went on a week vacation and came back, and Dr. Allred called me and said I was the uh, new women's uh, volleyball coach as we were <laughs> going into uh, intercollegiate athletics. He asked me if uh, we'd like to play a freshman schedule that first year or go whole hog. I wasn't real bright. Uh, I said, well, let's just go all the way. And uh, after a 4-17 uh, and 17 season, uh, and I'm not a real good loser, uh, that might have been a mistake. We might have taken a different approach. Uh, the first four years, uh, I think we were 41 and 74, and I, I don't lose real, real easily. But uh, the school has been really, really good in trying to build a solid program, well-balanced program, and they began to give us some scholarships, and a coach who knew almost nothing began to learn a little bit from my mistakes and going to uh, camps and studying and so forth. I think the next four years we were 144 and 42. That wasn't because I improved that much at coaching, but we got some athletes who could play. And all of us who coach know that's a lot of the bottom line. Thank you to Harding. Uh, thank you to Dr. Gaines and Dr. Burks who supported this program so well. Dr. Alry and Greg Harnden, uh, my wife who uh, lived with 16, 18 years of uh, some strange schedules for those of us who have coached over the years. I appreciate that. And when I got the letter from the committee, I went by and talked to Greg Harnden, and I mean this genuinely. I do not feel like I belong in this group, but I didn't want to turn it down. <laughs> Thank you all very much. We're a little uh, out of sync with that program you have, so uh, the next inductee is Bridget Benson Carter. Bridget Benson Carter, a native of M. Bowden. Let's hear it for M. Bowden, Bridget. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> she arrived at Harding in 1993, and over the next four seasons, she helped lead the women's basketball team to a 92-34 record and two NAIA national tournaments. Bridget averaged in double figures in each of her four seasons, including a career best of 17.1 points per game as a freshman. One of the top defensive players in program history, Bridget's the only Lady Bison with more than 100 career blocks, 200 career steals. Bridget ranks third in career scoring with 1,803 points and is fourth with 878 career rebounds. She is the fourth Harding women's basketball player to be inducted into the Harding Athletics Hall of Fame. And uh, Coach Greg Harnden says this of Bridget. Bridget was a very unselfish star and made everyone on the floor better. She was always willing to do whatever was asked in order to win. Her stats in scoring, rebounds, block shots, steals, and assists, as well of the fact that she often had to guard the opponent's best scorer, showed her versatility and value. Bridget enters the Harding Hall of Fame representing teammates that were exceptional young women. Harding was blessed to have Bridget, and we say amen. Bridget. Gonna use my cheat sheet. I'm not very well at public good at public speaking. But first of all, I would like to sincerely thank everyone on the committee for thinking of me for this wonderful recognition. This is such an incredible honor and privilege and something I will always reflect on with great pride. Being a part of the Harding basketball program has a significant influence on my life and has helped shape me into the person I am today. 
I will always cherish the memories and the friends that I have made during those years. I want to thank everyone who supported me and guided me during such an impressionable time. First, I'd like to mention my coaches throughout my life, starting with my Pee Wee coaches, my high school coaches, and my college coaches, Coach Harnden and Coach Elliott. All of those have impacted my life in a different way. I'd also like to thank my biggest coaches in my life, my mom and dad. I can't leave my sister out. She has been and will always be one of my biggest supporters. I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Thank you to everyone who took time out of their day to come today and celebrate with me this recognition. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, well deserved, I promise you. Our next inductee is Justin Cohn. Some of you guys remember this one. A native of Fort Worth, Texas, Justin etched his name in Harding's baseball record book from the years 2002 to 2005. For much of his Harding career, regular batting gloves were just not enough for Justin Cohn. As hard as he swung, he needed something a little stronger, and he came to the plate many times wearing industrial work gloves, I guess with the big cuffs, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Justin's powerful right-handed swing launched 47 home runs in his career, a Harding record, by the way. Justin had 10 or more home runs in each of his four seasons and a school record six multi-home run games. He had 50 or more hits in three of his four seasons, and he holds Harding's career record with 219 hits. He had more than 50 runs batted in in a season twice and holds Harding's career record with 198 runs batted in. As a pitcher, uh, Justin compiled a 9-5 career with a 3.60 ERA average and six saves in 90 innings pitched. Justin became Harding's first NCAA Division II All-Region player in 2005, was three-time All-Gulf South Conference, and was the 2008 Gulf South Conference Tournament Most Outstanding Player. Justin is the 10th Harding baseball player to earn entry into the Harding Athletic Hall of Fame. Shane Fur uh, Fullerton, his coach, he's at the academy now with the Wildcats, but Shane said this about Justin. Justin was a difference maker for our program from the first practice after he arrived on campus until his final game as a Bison. His freshman season, the spring of 2002, was a season that helped legitimize Harding as an NCAA Division II program. Our team could feel that legitimacy starting to materialize when they first saw Coney, as they called him, take batting practice. By the end of that season, his efforts as a freshman had helped garner the Bisons our first NCAA national ranking and Justin the most valuable player trophy at the Gulf South Tournament. And Shane said, I'll never get tired of telling people how he hit a home run to the pool side and another to the opposite field in that tournament on one of the deepest outfield fences we had ever seen. Justin, throughout his career, was a truly great hitter and is a truly good, godly man. He deserves this honor, and it was a privilege to have coached him and to get to know his wonderful family. I'm thankful and proud for them all. Justin Cohn. It's an honor and a blessing to be be here with everybody getting inducted and everybody that's uh, supporting Harding and supports Harding currently. It was a blessing to play here and enjoyed it. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, just want to say thank you to my parents. Um, they loved me 
all over this country and took me to every tournament that I, that they could. So I just appreciate that. They gave me the opportunity to live out a dream and be able to go to college and play ball and get an education and get a degree. Um, thankful for Coach Full uh, recruited me, recruited me as a pitcher of all things. <laughs> but uh, appreciate the opportunity to do to do both here as far as pitch and hit and everything. Uh, got some teammates here tonight that I say thank you to. Uh, it was a pleasure and a blast to play ball with y'all for those four years. Uh, enjoyed it. Never forget it. Um, just uh, just thankful that uh, I get to spend this this moment and time with uh, family and they got to come and experience this. Uh, and just Thank you, uh, everybody here, as far as uh, the nomination ability to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. That's, it's a great pleasure. I just appreciate it. Um, and uh, that's all I got. So. <laughs> Thank you. Our next uh, inductee is Aaron Farley. Are you here, Aaron? Yeah, I hadn't focused on you. It's good to see you, man. Uh, Aaron Farley came to Harding from Jonesboro, and he began his career in 1999. During his senior season in 2003, Aaron had fans on the edge of their seats. And, you know, he made the Little Rock news channels, too. Everybody was pulling for Aaron. Uh, he, let's see. He missed number 99, didn't he, Jeff? I forgot. He had, um, no, no, uh, 88. He had 88, and he missed number 89. He had made a, a streak of 88 straight free throws, just barely short of the NCAA Division II record at that time. That season, uh, Aaron set Harding's single-season record and led NCAA Division II in free throw percentage at 90. 3.8. That's about what I shot there. <laughs> Free throws were not all that Aaron excelled at. He scored 1,539 career points, eighth all-time at Harding. Made 206 career three-pointers and dished out 416 career assists. Aaron also had Harding's only triple-double on record with 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists against Washita Baptist in 2001. And I can't think of anybody better to do it to her. <laughs> Aaron was an uh, All-American in 2003, and he was also the Gulf South Conference Player of the Year that season. He was three-time All-Conference and twice All-Region. Aaron was the 2003 Barry Hill Award winner. And for those of you who are around, that's an award presented from Harding to the outstanding athlete, both men and women. Jeff Morgan wrote this about Aaron. What an incredible story. From nowhere to go, to tryout, to walk on, to scholarship, to playing, to first team all conference, to conference player of the year, to all American. I can't say enough about Aaron's dedication to the game, his tireless work ethic, and hours in the gym on his own, and his ferocious competitive spirit. That spirit was evident in the gym every day. He is absolutely one of the best to ever put on a bison uniform. And yes, I would put him at the free throw line again to shoot the technical free throws, even with a streak of 88 on the line. He's our best free throw shooter. And he said that he's proud of you, Aaron, and we all are. Congratulations, thank you for all you invested in our program. It was an honor and a privilege to walk with you every day through this journey, Coach Morgan says.
Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> For me to be on the same page as, as these great, great athletes and, and Harding history, it, it truly, truly is an honor. Um, very fortunate to be able to play the two sports, basketball and golf here. Um, so many memories. Uh, I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, my beautiful wife. Um, we have a we have a 16 month old boy together, and uh, you two are my life. And uh, uh, thank you for all that you do uh, for us, and you make me a better person each and every day. And I love you so much. Um, my mom, and my dad's here. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do. You best parents in the world. Um, always motivating me, always encouraging me, always always got my back on everything. Uh, I love you too so much. I'm very blessed to be your son. Uh, my sister is here. Shayla, she played, she played volleyball here. At the same time, I was very fortunate to be able to share those memories with, with my sister. Um, she was a stud. <laughs> if you guys thought I could jump, that girl could jump out of the gym. Uh, there was no doubt about it. She was a great athlete. Her husband, Joe, he was my roommate. Uh, he was also a pitcher uh, here at, uh, at Harding University. They uh, drove all the way from Fayetteville. Thank you so much for being here. It means so much. Uh, coach Boyd, thank you. Uh, Nikki Boyd was our golf coach. He allowed me to play golf after basketball season was over with. We um, Eight months of basketball, basketball, basketball. It was, I was very fortunate to be able to, to travel uh, with those golfers and, and play the game that I love. I love golf, so that was very, uh, very awesome to do. So um, as a walk-on, uh, red shirt, uh, red shirt freshman, 120 pounds coming out of high school, um, cocky. <laughs> Not to say that. <laughs> Boy, did I get humbled really, really quick. Um, guys like Lenny Burt, if you guys remember Lenny Burt, 6'1, 190, pure muscle. He was very wide and low to the ground, the best defensive player in, uh, in the Lone Star Conference at that time. I learned so much from him motivated me and encouraged me and, and pushed me every single day to help me to become the player that I, I became. And so many others uh, that shared the basketball floor with me. Um, Chris Hardaway, Laverne Floyd, Brent Adams, um, Jay Brogdon's here tonight. Thank you so much for coming, buddy. He was my roommate. Um, he was our leader, um, no doubt about it. Darren McCrillis, Carl Vault, uh, so many others I shared the basketball floor with. that. It's not possible for me to even be up here without those guys because basketball is such a team sport. And um, very blessed to be able to share the basketball floor with those guys. Uh, I'll do this without, without crying. I get emotional sometimes. Coach Morgan, Coach Kirby, love you guys so much. I mean, this university is so lucky, so blessed to have you two as the head coaches here at Harding University, 100%. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for not giving up on me when times do get tough, because I promise you it did. <laughs> but thank you for allowing me to play uh, this great game, basketball, in front of the best fans uh, in the country, the Rhodes Rowdies, um, hands down. Truly was the best memories of my life to be able to play the game of basketball with you guys. Coach Ray Lynn Woods as well. I think Ray Lynn's here. Uh, Coach Ray Lynn, love you, man. Thank you so much. You know, it's not just about basketball, uh, golf. It's not about just uh, awards, who wins, who loses. Um, you know, our ultimate goal in life is to, to have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, it, it, it's all about who you associate yourself with respect others, and have love for all people. And I was able to do that here at Harding University. For that, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much.
This next inductee, of course, is very special to me, Coach Hugh Gruber. And like a uh, fellow inductee, Carol Bailey, Hugh Gruber, who is a native of Columbus, Ohio, was a pioneer actually at Harding. Gruber, who was a 1950 graduate of Harding College, was Harding's first men's basketball coach after the program was reestablished in 1957. And only its second season under Coach Gruber, <clears throat> Harding compiled a 500 record at 13-13 overall. And, and that was big for us, I'm going to tell you. The 1963-64 team was Harding's first with a winning record at 14 and 12. Gruber's Bisons won 16 games in 1967 and 68 and topped that with a 17-10 record in 1968 and 69. And that was Gruber's last as head coach. Gruber also coached Harding's tennis and track and field teams. And following his 12-year uh, coaching career at Harding, he served as Harding's athletic director from 19 69 to 1977. Coach Gruber's gone now. <clears throat> His wife Mildred will accept the uh, reward and the plaque for Coach Hugh Gruber. <clears throat> Mildred is a talker. She just got through telling me to tell me what to say. Thank you very much for this award for my sweet husband. And we appreciate it very, very much. I just want to thank all of you uh, for being here and for uh, the things that, uh, that we accomplished at Harding, my husband did. I taught at the academy for many years. But, uh, but it's been a great time for us, and I want to thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. She was like a mama to us, as you might uh, gather. <clears throat> the next inductee is Matt Hall. And I'm sure all you Cyclones uh, sitting out there uh, have heard Coach Hall tell you how good a basketball player he was. But I'm telling you, at Harding, we believe him. He was good. Number 30, Matt Hall. And I, all of you have been in the Rhodes Reeves Fieldhouse, <clears throat> have seen that jersey hanging from the rafters. After coming to Harding from DeQueen, Arkansas in 2002, our, our next inductee, became, I, I think, one of the most beloved student athletes ever to play at Harding. And during his career, Matt was a three-time Gulf South Conference Most Valuable Player, earned All-American honors his junior and senior, senior seasons, and he's second at Harding in career scoring with 2,227 points, averaging more than 20 points per game in three of his four seasons, and twice scoring more than 600 points in a season. He made a Harding record of 634 free throws in his career. Matt also played golf for the Bisons, where he earned academic all-conference honors in 2007. Matt was the 2008 Barry Hill Award winner. And again, Jeff wrote this about Matt Hall. A great story of perseverance and overcoming, coming to Harding after breaking his ankle during his senior year in high school, red-shirting as a freshman to put on 20 pounds, becoming freshman of the year, then two-time conference player of the year, then completely tearing up his knee to only come back and be conference player of the year and an All-American. Again, is a true testament to the mental toughness 
and courageous spirit of Matt Hall. Every day at practice was like the first, a contagious, enthusiastic spirit and a great teammate who wanted, wanted to win every day, even in practice. Yes, the banner hanging in that gym reflects six years at Harding, and we are so thankful for all that you invested, Matt, <clears throat> in this program. And uh, that's both on and off the court. We thank you. So proud of you. And this is Jeff's uh, statement. It was an honor and a privilege to walk with you every day of this journey. Matt Hall. Farley would have started crying, so I wouldn't be the first one, but, <laughs> but he didn't. Um, when I was thinking about what to say getting this, all I could think about was the best things in my life, and they all come from here, all of them. My relationship with Christ, my wife, my kids, my best friends in the world <clears throat> are all connected to Harding, all of them. Um, and for that, I will be eternally grateful for this place. Um, my high school coach back there is here, Coach Ellis. Really appreciate you coming. Um, I, I have played for the best coaches of anybody in the world. Anybody. Um, coach Ellis, Coach Woods, Coach Kirby, Coach Morgan. Um, there's no better four man that anybody could have played for. Um, and I got to do it for six years here. Um, so. So that, that just topped it off to make it um, unbelievable. My parents are here, um, and I was thinking about all the memories we had here together, um, and it's just it's unbelievable when I think about the connections to this place and what we do. We take a trip to Pensacola Beach every year to this day that started my junior year at Harding at a Gulf South banquet with Coach Harnden and my family and Coach Morgan and um, I get to see Coach Harnden eat his dessert before his meal every time we went there, and that's it. <laughs> I'll never forget that as long as I live, watching him eat cake while everybody else is eat, eat, eating their meal. Um, I can't put into words how much this place means to me. Um, and I see all the stats and all that stuff, and all I think about is how much more Harding did for me than I ever thought about doing for it. Um, and I am so grateful for that, and I'm so grateful for all the relationships I have through this place. Thank you. I almost forgot something. Um, my assistant coach, who is now one of my best friends in the world, surprised me and brought almost my entire high school basketball team here tonight. And if that wasn't enough, him and his wife were both Arkansas Tech All-Americans <laughs> basketball. So, so to get them to the Harding event tonight was awesome. And I'm glad, I'm glad y'all didn't wear Tech shirts. So <laughs> thank you. Next inductee is Lori Hendricks Pilon. Our next inductee was one of the most feared hitters in the Arkansas Intercollegiate Conference. Now, during her career that spanned from 1992 to 95, Hendricks was selected as an NAIA Volleyball Honorable Mention All-American in 1994, and she followed that with a place on the uh, All-American third team in 1995. Hendricks was Harding's first All-American volleyball in volleyball. During her junior and senior seasons, Harding's volleyball team won 72 games and Lori Hendricks was the conference's most valuable player both seasons. In 1996, <clears throat> Hendricks received the Berry Hill Award as a Harding's top female senior athlete. Carol Bailey said this of Lori, Lori was the best offensive player that I ever had at Harding. 
Greg Harden is going to accept uh, Laurie's plaque. Laurie lives uh, out west up in the state of Washington, and uh, she's still involved in coaching volleyball, and she's traveling with her daughter, who's in a travel league uh, this weekend, was not able to be here. I've been corresponding with her by way of email, and she sent me this statement uh, to read on her behalf tonight. I think so fondly of my time playing volleyball at Harding. I felt great pride for our team and our school everywhere that we went. I am grateful to what my playing years at Harding afforded me in my life. I have been a PE teacher and volleyball coach at the high school level and believe I received the best education and playing experience I could have ever had at Harding. I have such fond memories of Coach Bailey, road trips, and playing in the field house. I'm truly honored to be chosen to be in the Hall of Fame. It means the world to me. And uh, I was privileged to be coaching at the time that uh, Lori was here. And for any of you that remembered her, she was a tremendous athlete. And uh, she really, I don't know, Coach Bailey, if you believe this, but she's kind of the one that turned the program. To We were able to recruit somebody like Lori and uh, contribute to the uh, success that we had. Yeah. Anyway. Um, accepting this on her behalf. Thank you so much. Our next inductee is Rick Jones. Rick graduated from Harding University in 1977. Our next inductee at that point embarked on an amazing coaching career. Rick Jones has won more than 250 career games. Now get this, including six state championships at Arkansas's Greenwood High School. I mean, the man knows how to coach football, Rick Jones. Jones was also the 2012 National Federation of High School Coaches Coach of the Year. As a player at Harding from 73 to 76, Jones had his best season as a junior linebacker in 1975 when he was second on the team with 107 tackles. Jones served as a student coach during the uh, Harding's H, uh, AIC championship season of 1976. And by the way, we're good in football now. I mean, I wish all of y'all could have seen Harding play football this fall. The only other thing we could have done was win the national championship, which we didn't, but we got too deep in the playoffs. And it was a 13-1 and record at that point, and they were good. And it kind of started back there with Rick Jones and those guys busting their brains out every day. So we've evolved. Uh, Ronnie Huckabee, who, by the way, got um, National Coach of the Year, I believe, wasn't it, this week? Uh, one of them, at least. And uh, he got the award last night from the Great American Conference for that football championship. But Ronnie said about Rick, Rick Jones does a good job in coaching football, as good a job as anybody in the entire country. And I say amen to that. Rick Jones. I really do appreciate it. It's a great honor. Um, I got the letter, of, you know, several months ago, and I was so proud and excited, and I had a so-called former teammate call me up, and he said, how's it feel to be the worst athlete in an athletic hall of fame? <laughs> and I said, that's not true. I'm better than Coach Huck. <laughs> I guess we debate that from time to time. But, uh, I remember being highly recruited out of high school, uh, at least in my own mind. And uh, I decided uh, when everybody else uh, missed the boat and didn't offer me a scholarship that I'd walk on at Harding. And I was just telling Coach Moat, I remember getting on the phone with great excitement, dialing that number, 
asking for Coach Proc, and I said, Coach Proc, this is Rick Jones. I'm coming to play football at Harding. And he said, boy, that's awesome. We're really excited. That's great. Who, who did you say this was? <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> but I take pride even today, Ms. Proc, in being one of Coach Proc's boys. And I want you to know that. I, uh, I feel as if I should give you a check. I know I owe you money for probably a gallon of cortisone. <laughs> and uh, I'll pay you back. Uh, okay. Send me a bill. But it is, uh, it's truly a great honor, and I am honored. And I know I'm not, I'm not the best athlete in the world, but I love Harding. And I th I've made a lot of decisions in 38 years of coaching, but I can say with no doubt whatsoever that the best one ever made was calling Coach Brock and telling him I want to be a bison. I want to thank my mom, my brother, my sister-in-law. Jonesy would be proud. Thank you. Next inductee, Daniel Kerway. Daniel, when Harding uh, head coach Steve Guyman uh, entered the, the Daniel uh, Kerway in any running event, he had a pretty good idea who was going to win the event. Daniel won his first national champion in the uh, indoor mile in 2008 and followed that with an outdoor national championship in 2008 in the outdoor 10,000 meters and in 2009 in the 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters between track and cross country. Kerwin was uh, won 13 All-American honors and twice placed in the top four in the national cross country <coughs> meet. Steve Guyman, who is uh, the coach uh, of Daniel, said this, watching Daniel run was like poetry. He was so fluid and graceful, but yet so powerful. He once won a race that began with him in the restroom. He is an outstanding, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Greg was saying that, you know, he is about 25 yards behind when he, <laughs> but he, he was a great runner. And you know, I, I, every year when we check the athletes in, and, and I always kid Guyman and Ted Lloyd and all those guys that have coached these distance runners. You know, when we do a physical, we put a stethoscope up on their chest, their heart goes lump. No. I mean, we wonder if they have a heartbeat sometime because they're in such great shape, they don't need to pump around a lot of blood. I mean, these guys are amazing, and truly watching Daniel run was like watching a point. Fluid, graceful, and powerful. He's an outstanding young man, a fierce competitor, and one of the most talented athletes, Steve said, that I've ever coached. Congratulations to you, Daniel, on this honor. Daniel Kerwa. I'm so honored to be here today and pleased. I thank the committee and uh, my special thanks goes to Coach Kenmon. I remember when I got here, he believed in me. I had injury my first year and I didn't run for nine months and I thought my, my running career was over, but every day he would encourage me to go to treadmill, go see the doctors, and um, he gave me a, a running program, so I would run like five minutes and then 10 minutes. And then after a while, I ran really good. And I remember, <laughs> I remember our first race, uh, time trial cross country. The ladies ran faster than me. I was so slow. And uh, coach was like, don't worry. You'll get there, just believe in yourself as I believe in you. And I was so motivated. And then about the 
bathroom incident that was so interesting. <laughs> we went there in California, and uh, I was late in the bathroom. They started the race. So I was like, there is no way coach flew me over here. And uh, I missed the race. I was like, no matter what, I'll have to race and finish. And uh, it was a really good race. I ran my personal best. <laughs> so thank you, coach. <laughs> you are there for me. You believe in me. And uh, I'd like also to thank uh, uh, Director Craig. He was there too. He used to encourage me, Dr. City. When I was uh, having injuries, he used to see me and give me hope. And uh, the team at large. And also I'd like to thank Julius Kuske. He was my roommate and uh, he used to show me around. And uh, he, we would train with him. I would follow his footsteps. He always tell me, follow my footsteps and you'll do good. And I really followed his footsteps and we ran pretty nice with him. And uh, I'd like to say thank you, Julius. He showed me the way. Thank you, everyone. And uh, one thing I learned from Harding is that um, they told me to believe in myself and believe in others and always to be grateful. Thank you, Bison. It's great to be here. I tell you, it keeps getting better. These are great athletes. I, I want all of you all to know that. Julius Kozicki, he mentioned him uh, just a minute ago. Julius was a nine-time All-American in track and field and a two-time All-American in cross country. Julius uh, claimed the 2006 Outdoor National Championship in the 10,000 meters. He earned all conference and cross country all four years and won the 2006 Regional Championship. Kozicki twice finished in the top four at the National Cross Country Meet. And again, Steve Guyman said this of Julius, I remember when Julius arrived on campus, his eyes were big and his uncertainty was apparent. As the years went by, Julius became a team leader. His national championship in 2006 was one of the highlights of my coaching career. Julius finished second at the 2006 Cross Country Nationals. Officials were prepared to disqualify the race winner for taunting Julius as he crossed the finish line. And Steve said this, Julius asked me not to let that happen. So Julius is a man with a large heart that cares so much for others. And Steve says, congratulations to you, Julius. Julius Kozicki. been said about me and I appreciate so much being here today. It's an honor to be here in front of you. You came here to witness uh, all the inductees who came here and first I will say thank you so much for sparing your time this evening for this evening. Uh, <clears throat> I will say uh, it's an honor to be to stand in front of you and in front of this uh, fellow inductees today. It's a special day for us, and a special day which all these coaches put together for us to be here. Thank you so much. When I first came here in 2004, I didn't know I would be here today. As coach said, when I came here, I was so naive. Everything was new. I didn't know I would make it this far. And coach put everything together for me to ease in and be one of the best athletes at Horing. In 2004, when you, if you were to tell me that I will be here today, when I first saw first snow here, and I thought it is uh, pieces of rock falling from the sky, <laughs> I will tell you it is impossible. But it is an honor to be here. 
as far as I can remember, running for Harding, uh, wearing that uh, Harding jersey that one. I didn't lose any conference championship. And it's because of the teammates who ran with me, stay with me, team up with me, and execute that powerful four-year consecutive conference championship. Thank you all the ad, uh, team members who are with me, who trusted in me, and gave me that permission, or gave me that honor to draft a slogan called uh, Defend the Spear. Defend the Spear means we don't want to lose any conference championship, and we executed. It's because Coach Kaimon drafted that comprehensive coaching skills and said, Julius, you got to do this. You have the teammates, the like of Daniel, uh, Arthur Khan, Philip Pywell, all came up together, and we execute every single conference, every single meet we went. We were one, two, three, four, five. It's because of Steve Kaimon. Thank you, Steve. You are truly my hero. Plan, your, plan good things in the life of others, even though you don't get anything in return. This must be done in, with sincerity and purity in heart. You cannot become truly worthy, not for you, what you have done, but for others who have become because of you. Keep uplifting those little souls, those young souls who want to mature and become great like you are. The inductees, whatever you've shown today, I believe those who are watching you will follow you soon, will follow and execute, and one day there will be all of them like you do today. Don't do it in return. Don't do it while expecting a return. Do it so that they will be as great as you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Lambert. I don't know how to pronounce it, Dr. Lambert, for preparing that ice bath for us when we have, when he had injuries. And thank you, Coach Cameron, because I couldn't withstand five minutes of ice bath. <laughs> but he could bring me that hit that part so I can put in my chest so that I don't freeze to death. <laughs> because they used to tell me, if you stay in that ice bath for five minutes, after five minutes, you'll be good. For, to finish that five minutes was so hard for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you so much, Dr. Lambert. As Dr. City said, we, at least we use more of our body, running all these miles we get a lot of injuries, and we could run to him. This, this leg this time, this leg this the next time. <laughs> thank you for taking care of us. I will not thank enough. Uh, when I first came here, it is far from Kenya to here. It is because of people like Mrs. Rice, who were more of our mother in diaspora, and he could, she could come give us that mother nature thing. Say, Julius, you know, bring us, helping us around Harding. Thank you so much, Mrs. Rice and your family. Thank you for somebody like Dr. Mordecai Cox, baptizing me, bringing me to the spiritual life. When I came to Harding, I didn't know much, but Mordecai Cox baptized me, and I was getting into that path to know Jesus more. Thank you for Harding. Thank you, my cousin who came all the way from New York to here to witness this day. Thank you, my cousin who came from Tennessee to witness this day. And everybody who traveled that day to come here, I say thank you so much. I would not be here at Harding today if it was not for people who came to Kenya and introduced us of Harding. It's because of them they saw this small, young, thirsty heart who need education and thought of Harding as the best place for them. Daniel Kirwa could have not be here. I would not be here. It's because of those people who reach us there and say Harding is the place to be. For sure, Harding is the place to be. I will not uh, thank my wife enough. Back then, she was my fiancée, but now she's my wife. For giving me that motivational heart, say, you can do it, Julius. It was so hard. I remember I had a Achilles problem. Every time I could limp for three months before my 
my Achilles become numb, so I can run. I could come feeling so much in pain, but she could tell me, you can do it. Sure enough, I would not be here if I could give up back then. Thank you so much. I think my daughters, my two daughters who are here right now, one day they will appreciate, say, Daddy, you did something that we could remember until now. Thank you for hurting, for bringing us here, giving us education that right now we can feed our children because of hurting, giving us that opportunity, giving us scholarship that we could not have afford to pay for hurting. It's so expensive, especially if you're coming from foreign land that there's no fast, they call FASFA or something like that. <laughs> so if it was not scholarship, I don't think I would be here. Thank you, Harding. Dr. Box, you was my president back then. Thank you for bringing that opportunity for foreigners like us to get a scholarship. Coach Handel, allowing international students to compete at Hori is an honor. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you again for our uh, organizing committee for bringing together this day for us <coughs> to appreciate our coaches, to appreciate those who have been around us when we came here as new <coughs> to this time, for having to see people who were there in the 1960s. Now I was 20, 2004. It's because of the organizing committee who thought this day to be beautiful so it can, so the rest will come and join this famous thing that uh, the new people will be longing for that day. Finally, I want to thank those who are inducted today. You deserve this day. Thank you so much. get a good feeling about Harding when I see that kind of stuff. Um, the next inductee is likely the most powerful hitter ever to play volleyball at Harding, Manuela Nesheva Harris. She is Harding's career kills leader and with a lethal jump, uh, with a lethal jump serve, is also the career leader in service aces. Nesheva was a first team All-American and led the Lady Bisons to three regular season conference championships and 101 wins in her four years at Harding. Her coach was Keith Giveney, and he said this of Manuela, Manny is one of the finest athletes I had the privilege to coach. She did things on the court that we often wondered how she was able to even execute. Undersized and in an entirely foreign world, she was able to take the D2 volleyball, uh, volleyball world by storm with her amazing play. And he said that did not come easy. Manny had much to learn and what few know is that she spent hours in the gym at night, weekends and holidays, often alone, working on her skills. And he said what made me most proud of her as her coach is that Manny fully embraced being a student athlete. She truly made the most of her opportunity. She excelled academically and came to know Christ while at HU. Her story is a remarkable one that she is still writing as a mother and as a wife. Manuela. Thank you so much. It's truly an honor to be here. First, I want to thank Coach Gibney and uh, his wife, Michael, for taking a big risk and recruiting me without even meeting me first um, and believing in me and pushing me to work hard and be better. Um, I also want to thank all the people who took care of me throughout the years and helped me with everything. Um, also, my teammates, who without them I wouldn't even be here. Um, 
all the staff and the trainers and the doctors who made sure I'm in my best shape ever. And, um, and to all the fans who really supported us and, and helped us be what we are. Thank you so much. Next inductee, Jimmy Sloan, who was a two-sport standout at Harding. Jimmy Sloan earned four All-America honors as a pole vaulter and spent his falls as a wide receiver for the Bison football team. Sloan's indoor pole vault All-American honors came in 1988, 1989, and 1991. He was an outdoor All-American in 1988. Sloan still holds the Harding Indoor Pole Vault record at 16 feet, 6 inches. On the football field, Sloan had 43 catches for 555 yards and 6 touchdowns in 1990 and 1991. Ted Lloyd said this of Jimmy, Jimmy was an outstanding athlete and a great teammate. He had a great work ethic and became one of the best pole vaulters in school history. And that's something from Ted Lloyd. He thinks you're good, Jimmy. Jimmy Sloan. <laughs> Jimmy, your picture fell apart, so you're not in. to man is just wow. Uh, I sat there and I looked through that list of in inductees for 2017 and it truly is humbling to even be considered, just to consider all the wonderful athletes that have come to this great institution. When I got here as a freshman, uh, I had an expectation, but I can truly say that Harden so much exceeded everything I ever expected. I can echo the words of Paul when he said that everything in my life at this point that's significant to me. Harden University has his fingerprints all over. Being an athlete at Harden was one thing, but the Harden experience for me was so much bigger than that. It was in the spring of my freshman year here, I was baptized into Christ. And you can't put a price on that. In the fall of my sophomore year, I met my wife. And 24 years later, she's still by my side. And as a result of that, we have three wonderful sons. I have a wonderful daughter-in-law, a wonderful mother-in-law, and that's all because of Harding. The things that I was able to accomplish on the athletic field and on the track was simply because I had wonderful people around me. God blessed me with a certain amount of talent, but it was people like Coach Lloyd who just wouldn't let me do anything less than my very best. He was so encouraging, Mr. Valentine. You, just know, you don't know how often it was your kind words that got me confidence to try to do a little bit better than I had in the past. I came here to run track, and I was looking at the two gentlemen who just went before me, and they probably ran more of their first practice than I did my whole time at heart. <laughs> uh, but it's a tremendous honor to be inducted with a group of athletes such as that. It was later on in my career here that I got the opportunity to play football. Uh, Coach Hupp, we had some heated battles because it was often his defensive backs that I was trying to earn a position against. And, but it always made us better. Harding University made me a better person. I could never say thank you enough I truly feel like I do not belong with this group of individuals. Uh, I think I still owe Harding for the things that it did to put me in the position to be the person that I am today. I thank each of you. I thank the committee for the consideration. I thank my family. And most of all, I thank God, and to him I give all the glory. Thank you. Amen. 
Our next inductee is Gil Truitt. And perhaps of all of the inductees for the night, Gil Truitt may know more than the rest about halls of fame. He's helped start five of them. He's an Alaskan, including the Alaska School Athletics Association Hall of Fame. And while a student at Harding, Truett helped organize an AAU team that was a forerunner to Harding's first intercollegiate team, uh, teams. And following his graduation from Harding in 56, Truett returned to his native Sitka, Alaska, and he dedicated his life to education, to youth, and working at Mount Edgecombe uh, High School as a teacher, basketball coach, and an administrator for 34 years. Tonight, Mr. Edgecombe, is inducted into his third Hall of Fame. And Ted Lloyd is going to come up here and accept for Gil Truitt. <clears throat> Hello, Gil. I've been told that uh, he's watching this from his hospital bed in Sitka, Alaska, there right now. So, I there's no way that I can express what an honor this is for me to accept for Gil. I met this little native Alaskan uh, boy when I first came to Harding. He looked me up when he found out I was a basketball player because he was completely eaten up with basketball. That was his life. What do I say about a fellow that I look at his list of credits and it's three typewritten pages long, and it's more outside of sports than, than inside of sports. When Marcy and I were in, in Anchorage, we went to the uh, Native American uh, Expo they had there, and they had uh, seven different, there are seven different uh, Indian tribes that make up the Indians in Alaska. And we went to the one that was his. He was a very proud Tlingit Indian. And asked the lady there, I said, do you know Gil Truitt? And she laughed and she said, everybody knows Gil Truitt. <laughs> he has had more honors than, than I could imagine. But his story goes like this. He was orphaned at 15 years of age. He went to Mount Edgecombe, which was a school, a boarding school for native Alaskans who lived out in small communities who didn't even have schools. And he was, he spent his life there and he's still, and he, it, it's, it's a long history to that school. The Department of Indian Affairs decided to close the school in the early 80s and Gil just lobbied and did everything he could and, and they did close the school, but two years later he had it open again for, for boarding students like that. They call him Mr. Edgecombe, and they call him Mr. Basketball in Alaska. He is a, <clears throat> has been a correspondent for Sports Illustrated. If somebody wants to know about Alaska basketball, they call him because he researched and wrote a book <coughs> on, on Alaska basketball. He has, an, among his honors, he has a street name for him in Sitka. He has a building at the school named for him. He was given an honorary doctorate by the University of Alaska, and he is still busy uh, doing things for other people. And, uh, and I want to read you parts of the letter that he wrote in accepting. He said, this is in response to your wonderful letter of October 4. I did not open the letter until it was time to go to bed. After reading that letter, I wiped tears from my eyes many times and was so excited and grateful that I was still wide awake at 3 a.m. <laughs> Pleasant memories certainly accompanied that letter. I thought of the, all the great professors, all the friendly students, and the family feeling that was so prevalent at Harding that all of those feelings and memories returned to me. I shed a lot of tears, tears of happiness and joy. I've been in touch with a number of Harding friends and have kept up with the university. 
To be inducted into the Hall of Fame is one of the great happenings in my life. And he said that when his wife put it on Facebook, he got calls from all over Alaska. He did interviews on the local TVs and, and, and newspapers. And he said in every interview, he talked about Hardy. That's Gil Truitt. Thank you very much. You're awesome. Okay, our next guy is Lewis Walker. When Harding uh, reinstated intercollegiate athletics in the late 1950s, one of its first stars was our next inductee, and that's Lewis Walker. Always a front runner in the hurdles in the AIC track and field meet, Walker won the low hurdles in 1959 and the high hurdles in 1962 Placed second in the hurdles four times. Walker was Harding's first starting quarterback, calling the signals from 59 to 61 and also playing defense, returning kicks, and kicking extra points. They don't make football players like that anymore, do they? Don't they? <laughs> By the way, I'm going to run a drag route 10 yards deep and see if you can get it to me this time. <laughs> Ted Lloyd said this about Lewis, and we love Lewis Walker. He's a great guy. When Harding started intercollegiate athletics, Lewis Walker was one of our first elite level athletes. He was outstanding as a hurdler, and he was a great track athlete. Lewis Walker. So many wonderful words have been said tonight. I can say thanks to the, to the committee, thanks to Harding to bestow this wonderful honor on me. And in doing that also bestows, bestows honor on the coaches that helped me along the way. And I'm so glad to see that Coach Groover was honored tonight because he was one of the ones that helped me so much. He and Coach Lloyd. They kept me on the track all the time, and that uh, made me love track after a while. <laughs> <laughs> it started kind of slow, but it built. <laughs> I remember distinctly the, the time that uh, Dr. Gaines came to my house and was sitting around the kitchen table with my mom and dad and uh, he was the reason that I came to Harding and since that time um, learned to love Harding almost as much as he does and it's been so so uh, long through the years that we haven't been haven't been back to campus that often but every once in a while and coming back today I gave our our family members that are here a tour of the campus and enjoyed so much the, the beautiful buildings and, and what is being done at Harding on a continuing basis. I was asked earlier what was my uh, favorite, um, favorite time uh, or memory of uh, running track and I think that uh, of all the races that we run, we, we ran and uh, the competition that we had um, Bill Melton and I, Bill Melton from State Teachers and I had a pretty good uh, competition going. Uh, in nearly every race that we had, any meet that we had, uh, we were one or two in the high, low, high and low hurdles. Uh, I don't know, if, I, I'm sure Coach Lloyd remembers that, right? <laughs> but one of the, one of the highlights of, uh, of track at Harding came when Coach Groover or, or I'm not sure whether it was Coach Groover or Coach Lloyd made the decision to attend the national track meet. 
And as a, as a freshman uh, at Harding, um, my times in the, in the high hurdles qualified to go to the national track meet, and, and Coach Groover wanted to go. So Roger Brown and I, I, and I think we may have become the first track uh, participants at the national track meet, is that right? And, uh, and we went to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, by car, of course. <laughs> no first class tickets. And, and we had a great experience. We had a great time together. And, and my dad went as a uh, uh, companion to drive with Coach Groover. Coach Groover couldn't find anyone to, to drive with him, and so my dad volunteered. And that was a good thing as well. In the race was Elias Gilbert from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And at the time, he was the world record holder in the low hurdles. He had just won the pen relays in the high hurdles two weeks before we had this race in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I had the privilege of running in one heat with him. I didn't make it to the finals, but it was unbelievable to watch this guy run. He's like the poetry in motion for sure. And if you have interest in hurdles and in track, you can go online and look at the, the video of his pen relays high hurdle event and it's a fantastic thing to watch in football you know we started out in 1959 and football was uh, was tough at first but we had great coaches we had Carl Allison and coach Proc um, just great men as you all know you're familiar more familiar with him than I am and um, smiley night and and Dick Smith and Coach Groover, all of them were there to help us get uh, football started. And as you know, they've honored the team, the, the 1959 team. The picture's on the back of the scoreboard, and my picture's not on it. Down at the bottom, I get a little footnote, not picture. <laughs> That's a notation you don't want to have, Beetle. Not pictured, right? <laughs> now, well, <clears throat> support has been indicated from a lot of the others. Support of family, support of uh, school, friends, and I've had a lot of that too. And my wife, Patricia, <laughs> and my two daughters are here and their husbands, my brother, my three sisters, my niece, my niece's daughter, who's a student here at Harding right now. Um, and then they have um, their wives and, and uh, husbands with them as well. The the not pictured thing happened was my wife and I didn't go to school together. We've known each other since sixth grade. We started dating in senior in high school. And she went to uh, away to school, I went away to school, different schools. Second year she transferred to the University of Arkansas and I was at Harding. I used to hitchhike a lot to go see her. And picture day on... Um, <laughs> 1959 was on a Saturday. I was somewhere between Russellville and... <laughs> on the way to Fayetteville. So I mixed, missed the photo day. <laughs> but uh, the other thing about Harding is friendships. And, and I hear it all the time, every, every time I talk to somebody about being here and their, their remembrance of Harding. And we had it on the football team as well. Not so much on the track team as because it's such an individual sport, but we did have relays and we had um, 
uh, outstanding performance on those relays. And I had the privilege of running with Wayne Gaither on the mile medley relay, and we won the AIC in, in 1961. 60 or 61. And, um, and that was a special event because the mile medley relay is no longer run, and, uh, and therefore, a short period of time, we held a record. So that was fun. I was uh, housed in the grad dorm, and it was the uh, mini athletic wing of grad dorm. And we had, um, my roommate was Wayne Gaither, Billy Ray Barden, and Ken Nicholson were our sweet mates. And we spent three years together. Ken Nicholson playing basketball and baseball, Billy Ray baseball, Wayne, baseball and track, and I, I had track and I played track and football. So just everything was athletics all the time, you know, just year round. And, and so about 10 years ago, we kind of reconnected. After 50 years, it was about time, wasn't it? And we, we decided that we would commit to having a annual event and get together and go somewhere with our wives and spend a week three days at a minimum, four days. So we did. So far we've had seven, and we're planning our eighth this coming fall. And uh, it's, it's been a great time. It's a great stimulus to remember things, I can tell you that. <laughs> it's who, to, who can top who, who remembers the story the best. But it's been a great time, and. We have great memories, all of us, and, and this honor is just humbling. I, I called the letter the, the October surprise, and, and when it came in, in October, I, I almost couldn't believe I was reading it, you know. It was, uh, it was such a, uh, an honor, it, it just make, make you look and to endorse uh, Dr. City's comments about the wonderful athletes after I watched the football team win the, or win the conference and then the, go to the uh, playoffs, I couldn't be there in person, but that iPad was a good second choice. And uh, the game came through really nice, and, and the, the guys played wonderful, and it's just a great time for Coach Huckabee to go out on. I wish the new team a lot of luck, and I wish Harding luck for the years to come, and I thank you very much. In case y'all didn't recognize the school, state teachers used to be Arkansas State Teachers College, which is now UCA. So that's who Lewis was uh, competing against. They, they had a great herder over there in that guy, Bill Melton. Our next uh, inductee is Kendall Washman Bryan. Our next uh, inductee took the collegiate soccer world by storm 2004, scoring seven game winning goals in her first 10 collegiate games. The feat was enough to land her in the pages of Sports Illustrated in that little section, you know, faces in the crowd. Kendall was there. Kendall finished that season with 13 goals, including Harding's first NCAA tournament goal. As a senior, Kendall scored 17 goals, was the 2007 Gulf South Conference Player of the Year. She is Harding's career goals leader with 48. Greg Harris, the soccer coach, said this of Kendall. Kendall is one of the most determined young ladies that I've ever been around, let alone coached. Her drive and her passion have long been a model for what Harding University women's soccer is all about. She's still a wonderful person and an awesome teammate and a better friend. She played a pivotal role in helping shape Harding soccer into the team that we are today. Kendall Washburn Bride.
Um, thank you for this honor and for selecting me as the first um, Harding soccer player in the Hall of Fame. That is truly an honor. My best college memories revolve around soccer. Um, I have vivid memories of my first game my freshman year and vivid memories of my final home game my senior year. But I think the best memories that I'll take away are the relationships that I had um, with my uh, coach and teammates and um, uh, many of those that are still some of my best friends today. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Coach Harris for recruiting me and um, putting up with me those years and for pushing me hard. Um, and also for my parents um, for all the um, traveling around that you did with me and encouraging me to come to Harding. And uh, once again, just thank the um, teammates that were a part of my life and they're the reason that I'm here today. And many of them are still some of my very best friends. I came to Harding to play soccer from Texas. I didn't know one person when I came here, um, but I left a very, very blessed person and uh, with many wonderful relationships that last a lifetime. So thank you. Kendall looks like she can still play. <laughs> she stays in shape while the rest of us. Mm. <laughs> the next and last inductee is Alicia Williams Leverett. When Harding head tennis coach David Elliott opened his scorebook to fill out his lineup from 2006 to 2009, he penciled in the same name on the number one singles line every time. Alicia Williams set the Harding record for wins at number one with 70. In each of her four seasons, she won 15 or more number one singles matches. She was not bad as a doubles player either, winning 66 matches at the number one, second most in program history. Williams' best season in doubles was her sophomore year, where she won 22 of 27 doubles matches. David Elliott, and he was here earlier, said this of Alicia, she was a great teammate and a great representative of Harding, as all of these inductees have been. Alicia Williams Leverett. give a speech tonight. <laughs> so fortunately my husband gave me something to write on real quick. <laughs> so mostly just want to say thank you uh, because you know behind people that have succeeded there's always people that have gotten them there and that's what I'm thankful for. I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for the people behind me to help me along the way. Um, so this is definitely an unexpected blessing and uh, definitely want to thank my family that's here tonight and my best friend Elizabeth and my wonderful husband Aaron and we're expecting our first child, so we're excited about that. So glad my baby's here with me. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Coach Elliott. I see him over there in the background. He probably had something to do with me getting in here. Probably didn't deserve it. Um, believing in me and, and recruiting me. I remember my aunt. She's not here tonight, but she, uh, she recruited David Elliott. Coach Elliott to recruit me, <laughs> so she had a big part in that. And then, of course, Morris Sewell uh, recruited me because he he was uh, the recruiter for my state of Mississippi, and so um, and I saw him tonight here too. And uh, I'm you know thankful for my teammates. They were encouraging. I, like I said, I like the relationships I built. That's what I'm so thankful for is the relationships. That's what you really remember. And uh, the Harding Athletic staff, um, especially just going in the office all the time, bugging Miss Lou or uh, Brenda or Janice before her, and just uh, and Greg, just bugging everybody in there is always fun. And uh, and then just uh, the, uh, the just the Harding University in general. Um, you know, I came here from Mississippi, wanted to get out of my state, go somewhere different, do something different. And so playing tennis here gave me a chance to financially get to go here, so it was a, a real big blessing. I'm just thankful to God that, that I was able to get to do all that and meet so many great people. Thank you. What a great night it's been. That uh, concludes our program. I would uh, remind you inductees that uh, pictures need to be made over here next to the piano. So all of you that were inducted tonight 
gather there the, uh, by the piano for a uh, group of pictures. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you all for coming. We're grateful to you. We're grateful for Harding. We're grateful for all that it stands for. For the great athletes that are in this room that have represented this university well, we're grateful. And uh, we pray for a continued interest in our programs here, support these coaches. Uh, send us your sons and daughters. Send us a little money along the way if you care to. <laughs> but we're grateful to you. We're going to ask uh, Harold to lead us in a verse of the alma mater and uh, concluding the singing of that song, we're dismissed. Surprise, Harold. <laughs> He's he done that for 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> Near the foothills of the Thank you.